Good evening and welcome to day seven of the 2021 Milwaukee Film Festival presented by Associated Bank. I'm Tiana Clayton Mallet, Community Outreach Coordinator with Black Lens at Milwaukee Film, and this is Performance Art, Trauma, and Healing. This is a conversation with Jay Sharon, director of the film Gold, Damar Walker, director of the film The Beckoning, and Roz LeBlanc, director of the film Can You Bring It? All three directors will talk about how they use their art to talk about trauma and facilitate healing within Black communities. Before we get started with the conversation, a few pieces of housekeeping. As you've seen, we have a double up challenge happening. Thanks to the generosity of Susan and Bob McCulley, if we raise 50,000 during the festival, they will double it. So text double up to 44321 or go to milwaukeefilm.org slash donate to donate or go to milwaukeefilm.org slash members to become a member and help us meet our goal. Milwaukee Film couldn't do what we do during the festival as well as throughout the year without the support of our members. Members get access to free films throughout the year, discounts on tickets, passes, and more. Plus our members keep the nonprofit Milwaukee Film going. If you think that sounds appealing, join us. If you are already a member, thank you and help us spread the word. To see our full slate of events and films, go to milwaukeefilm.org slash MFF. And remember, wherever you're watching this panel, drop your questions and comments in the chat or comment session, and we will pull them into our conversation. So in addition to following Milwaukee Film, please make sure you follow Black Lens on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Now let's get started. I introduce to you Jamie Montgomery, our facilitator for today's conversation. Thank you, Tiana. I'm very excited to be with you all today. Um, again, my name is Jamie Montgomery. Uh, I am from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, I am a mother, a dancer, um, and a whole bunch of other different things. My pronouns are she and her. Um, and so I'm very thankful again for the opportunity to be able to talk about dance um, and how trauma and um, how it brings healing uh, to our communities. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to uh, introduce and welcome our panel as they're coming up. Um, and so we're gonna, so we have, as Tiana mentioned, we have Jay Sharon, Roz LeBlanc, and Damar Walker joining us today. I'm gonna turn it over to Roz to introduce herself and tell, tell everybody about you. Hello, thank you, Jamie. I, um, I, my name is Rosalind LeBlanc. I go by Roz. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm currently in Los Angeles on the traditional lands of the Tongva people. Um, I am the co-director of uh, Can You Bring It? Bilty Jones and D-Man in the Waters. I uh, am the producer. I co-directed the film with my collaborator, Tom Hurwitz. And it's an honor, a real honor to be here today. Thank you. Uh, next, we'll have Damar Walker. Hey everybody, my name is Damar Walker. Um, I am here in the city of Milwaukee, which sits on the um, Ho-Chunk, Potawatomi, and Menominee lands. Um, I am the artistic director of Kothi Dance Company, um, based here in the city. Um, and I also am a faculty member in the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee's Dance Department, Peck School of the Arts. And I'm super excited to be in this beautiful space to talk about this, this art stuff with y'all on this evening. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, finally, we have Ms. Jay Sharon. Hello, everyone. My name is Jay Sharon, um, pronouns she, her, and um, I am currently on the traditional lands of the Lenape people in Brooklyn, New York. And I um, am from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, a choreographer, filmmaker, assistant professor at Medgar Evers College in Brooklyn, New York. And I'm excited to be here to talk about art and um, artwork tonight. Thank you. And I neglected to say that I am the uh, associate professor and chair at Loyola Marymount University. So we're all three dance educators. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Yes, yes. 
Excellent. <laughs> All and right, so this is a conversation. Go ahead, Damar. I said, I forgot my pronouns. I go about pronouns he and they. Look at us. <laughs> <laughs> right. This is a conversation. We're going to keep it light and easy. Please, if you have questions uh, while you're viewing, uh, feel free to put them in the chat. We'll bring them into the conversation as we're moving along. Um, so just to start out, um, as Black dancers, you all decided to create films. And so if you could talk about what inspired you to create the pieces that you made. Yeah, that's the question. What inspired you all to create the uh, pieces that you made? Um, anybody can start. <laughs> okay. Should I start? Okay. You said okay. That's you right. Okay. I said I made the first sound. Yeah. Um, so I danced with uh, the Bilty Jones Arnie Zane uh, company in the 90s. And um, I, uh, prior to that, when I was 16 years old, I was at the American Dance Festival as a young dancer. And I saw this company I had never heard of before uh, perform this piece called D-Man in the Waters. And that was in 1989. And I absolutely fell in love with the dance. I had never seen a dance like that before. And I had never seen a company like that before. It was the Bilty Jones Arnie Zane Dance Company. I had never heard of them. And I, I, my mind was blown. And I kind of made this decision that I wanted to be a professional dancer so that I could do that dance. And um, Later, when that dream came to fruition, and I actually ended up in the company and um, had the great fortune of performing many dances with D-Men in the Waters being one, I what I really appreciated about the piece was that um, it, as a dancer, it took you through this experience um, a 40, a 40 minutes of this kind of grueling, almost a gauntlet that you go through as um, a dancer. And the dance having been made in 1989, at the height of the AIDS crisis, it really embodied um, an aspect of what it takes to survive that was so urgent and so immediate at that time. And Later, as an educator, when I started restaging the piece on, uh, and this is now 20, 25 years later, when I started restaging the piece on various students around the country, I realized that absence of AIDS from the discourse had left these students without a way in to understand the urgency and the vibrancy and the vitality of that dance. And I was looking for a way to kind of, at first maybe demystify the dance a bit and crack it open and say, uh, and, and allow students to understand why that dance was so critical and why it was so important that it was made at the time that it was and how then to translate the emotion um, into a new time period. So that was the initial uh, inspiration to to make the film but quickly it blossomed from there um, into a story that was much more expansive than just this uh, a film for the students um, and maybe as we go along I'll unpack that but for now I'll say that's where the inspiration was excellent thank you Jade I guess I'll go uh... <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, I I think looking back on my life and always wanting to be a dancer, I was always inspired by, by film and specifically what dance has done um, with film. Like I remember, oh gosh, I'm about to tell my age. Um, I remember when Remember the Time premiered on NBC and I was like, this is really, really fascinating. Um, and just always being a fan of Michael Jackson, um, Janet Jackson, um, watching um, like Rhythm Nation 
and always sort of thinking about what I would love to do as a dancer. And then sort of coming into my professional um, career and thinking, what could I do outside of the stage? And I think it sort of led me to this, this other avenue um, and being inspired, like, you know, remember the time in Rhythm Nation and saying I would love to sort of create something like that. But I think all of my culminating experiences, especially during the pandemic and thinking about so much of what was happening in the city as well as in the nation was really sort of um, heavy on my spirit. And so um, I decided that I wanted to do something that was going to um, sort of be a release of those emotions. So just like the institutional violence that Black people deal with on a daily, um, of course, a lot of the, the state sanctioned stuff, um, the hyper segregation in the city. Um, and I was like, I don't want to do like a typical, <laughs> like Dan's um, sort of like clip. Um, Cause I think that's so, um, that's, that's very prevalent right now in our world with like, you know, like TikTok and Instagram. And so I was like, I think I'm gonna make something a little bit more cinematic, of course. And so I decided that I wanted to do something that would center me moving to a black voice in a black space um, to a black soundscape. So uh, literally sort of getting together with these local artists here in the city and creating this piece called The Beckoning. Um, that uh, I just felt was what I needed to do for, for me and also for, um, for Black folk, especially here in the city of Milwaukee. Yeah, I'm gonna um, join in afterwards. I think, well, I know I was laying in my room in Milwaukee, in my mama house, because <laughs> I was in quarantine um, in Milwaukee when the world was just, up and I I never was into comics or um, I didn't watch it growing up and I just had this vision God gave me this vision like I want you to make a superhero film and I'm like mm -mm, if you know me if you ever seen any of my previous works or I never have gone into like that fantasy land or um, even just like the costuming or that type of theme. Um, but it came in the vision. I started working on the vision board. And I think it was special because um, it was the first time that I was dan I made a film back home in Milwaukee. My first three films were in Los Angeles. And so we were going through with everything in the pandemic. And then um, Breonna Taylor's death really just... Um, it struck me. Um, I was having these community stretch classes where I was raising money, um, and I was I donated like portions to her, to her cause, and I was just thinking of all the different ways that I could um, support her. And then I um, had the vision of the film, but I didn't necessarily want to center the trauma in that way. Um, I wanted to create a narrative where um, a black woman could control her narrative inside the film. And so that's how Gold came about, just this idea of, you know, you hear this saying when a black girl or black women take their earrings off, they about to fight. But I thought, what if a black woman put hers on and turned into a superhero? And that was the premise of how it began. That's great. That's great. Um, so uh, you all talked about uh, one of the things that stood out for me and just now was like the importance of narrative and telling our stories. Um, and so using these two platforms of dance and film um, to tell a story, um, can you talk a little bit about what are some of the themes um, in your pieces um, and storytelling? I'll, uh, we'll start backwards and go the opposite way. Okay, well, I think I would just even just join the end of Mar. This every location in the film was a black owned space, um, and I think that's important when 
<laughs> talking about the film. Um, Ms. Venus Williams and Alice Garden, um, and also in the Creative Corridor, um, they allowed me to shoot the film there. Um, so they're just a part of the narrative as well. I also centered a lot of Milwaukee social dances in the film. So some of the movements that we use are, you know, we doing little, you know, I'm a dancer, so I gotta show y'all some stuff. Hey, <laughs> like those dances um, come from where I grew up doing those dances. And so they are part of the story, the body tell telling this narrative that is very specific to us in the film. And then I'll let you all just keep. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, to her. <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna say I'm, I'm, you know, going to piggyback off Jay. You know, just that idea of blackness being at the center of it all. I shot my film at the Creative Corridor as well. Um, I thought a lot about um, this idea of duality that black people live within, and thinking about like, what does it mean to sort of recognize and um, be very um, connected to the trauma, but also thinking about what does it mean to sort of um, be able to exist outside of that and that reclaiming of oneself. Um, and, you know, you see myself and shout out to Destiny Fletcher, the amazing Destiny Fletcher, uh, who wrote the poem uh, in my film where you see a lot of intimacy, but also um, um, times where we are very um, set in different locations and spaces in my film. Um, and there's always something that's very uh, special to me about how multi-layered and dimensional Black people can be. So I sort of play, like I said, with this duality of thinking about even with the dress, like Jay was saying, with the earrings and where we was wearing things that was a little bit more pedestrian with the all black, but sort of like with me wearing the cloak and, you know, the headband with the cowrie shells, where it plays with these ideas of like mysticism, but also being very mundane as well, um, which I believe that's who black folks are um, at our core. Um, and yeah, just sort of honoring all of that, but sort of thinking about the ways in which um, Blackness can sometimes be contained um, within like a binary. So like, mm -hmm. just always thinking about these these dualities that we live within as Black people. And I think that um, one of the, in some ways our, our films are very different um, of course, but then there's this other way in which they um, really are similar. And I think about the idea of um, the way movement is used as another layer of narrative and storytelling and um, and also how movement operates in in the film. Like that's definitely a theme that uh, my collaborator Tom and I really had to dissect is how how are we going to capture this dance? In our case, it was a dance that had existed that you know exists and is not generated from my own body, right? Mm -hmm. So it's it's established repertory. So we had to honor it in that way. Um, and in that way, it's different from uh, Jade and Demar's uh, uh, work, but at the same time, there was still that question of how are you going to film this in such a way that the movement is operative? You're not just um, capturing it, but you're but you're having it do its job, which is to viscerally move your viewer. Um, and that's that's always the job of the choreographer, you know, and of course in live stage production, but it's also the job of the director choreographer on screen. And it's a much harder job to move to viscerally connect to your audience. Mm -hmm. And so I think that the, that is definitely a theme um, that was a theme for the making of ours and and a theme that I feel like I saw as a viewer in the other two films. Um, and the other aspect of this that I think is really um, pertinent to the three of our films is the idea of location. Um, and I feel like 
uh, Damar and, and Jade, yours in a way, location is so integral to the experience of watching the film. But it, I couldn't help but be reminded of um, a quote by the poet Claudia Rankine. Um, and I'm not going to do this verbatim, but I remember her talking about uh, an aspect of being black and saying, there's no aspect of my private life that is not affected by the personal, the, the political life. There's no aspect of my personal private life that is not affected by the political life. And that's, that's a real truth of what it means to be black, you know, in America. And so, and so again, that's a location too, you know, private versus public, private versus political. And, and the fact that, that in shooting D-Man in the Waters and telling Bill T. Jones's story through that, through the dance and through the film, that there's no aspect of his personal life that is not affected by the political life. And that's integral to understand if you're going to do D-Man in the Waters, if you're gonna shoot it and, and, and shoot it well, and if you're going to dance it and dance it well, you have to understand the political that's deeply embedded in the personal. Um, so yeah, I saw those themes um, in all three of our films, even though our films are really different, which is kind of amazing that it has that similarity. Yeah, that's good. I was, uh, as I was uh, listening, one of the, the concept of the duality, um, the public versus private, you know, um, these kind of parts of ourselves. And I think as black people, you know, Damar, you said this, you know, or or uh, alluded to it a, a little bit more around, you know, we have this extra layer, the duality. So we everybody got public and private life and or, or uh, public and political, um, but as black people, we have this extra layer that um, sits on top. Um, and so, you know, so there's that piece but then there's also, you know, the concept that you were talking about rise around uh, embodiment, right? And so there's this part, this process that you go through, um, just in general as a dancer, as you're beginning, to, preparing to perform a piece, any piece, you know, a choreographer, you know, um, sorry, a choreographer lays work on you, and and so you you get it technically and rise in the in the documentary. There's a part where it's like, okay, you got it technically. It's beautiful. You perform it well, you know, but I don't feel it. You know, you talked about it being visceral. I don't feel it. And so uh, can you all talk in, in about the process of creating the piece, you know, but then also move and, I, and it can be a little hard because it's so personal, but like you got to still embody it. You know, you keep working on it, you keep working on it and it gets to a point where you the heart and the spirit of the piece has to come through just as much as the of the movement. That's where people feel it, you know, and then and then the movement continues to like tell the story and take it on. And so can you talk about a little bit about your process of embodying the work that you created um, and what it was like for you to to move Move from idea and concept to, you know, actually putting, you know, getting it on screen and and having the vision that you had in your mind come through, actually come through in the work, which doesn't always happen. Should we go in reverse order again? <laughs> yeah, uh, whoever, everybody doesn't have to answer. You know, it's the conversation. We're trying to get That's to the true. conversation. Yeah. Y'all gonna make me have yeah, to I act think, like me. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to act like me. <laughs> no, as far as embodying, so usually, as a choreographer, I don't always like to be in my own work. Like I like to be able, it's hard for me to choreograph and then also perform because when you do perform, it's a different process of being able to get into the connection. Um, and so the the great thing about film is that you have you know you pre production and you have you have your post production. So some of the choreography comes in the editing process. And so I'm one of the people who likes to edit, and I like to if I'm not co edit with someone because that is a part of making sure that it is embody in the way that I need the spirit to come out of the dance on the camera. Um, I think the beautiful thing about live performance is that the, the body is problem solving live. Like you mm. see the body, 
going through its process. You see the leg shake and holding that releve and that hinge or whatever you see it, but on film, there's a distance. Um, so I think for me is what helps me embody it is being very clear and very specific on the vision, allowing for things to happen. I mean, flowing, right? So when you're filming, at least for me, there's these beautiful surprises that happen. And um, you have to just, I think what keeps us being a dancer and then being behind the camera or working in film is that we understand rhythm. We understand flow and we understand how things need to go into the next scene um, because of our sense of time. And so I think I use that as a tool when working in film and making sure that the, the vision and the message is embodied. I'm gonna have Damar answer the question, then Roz, I'm gonna reframe it a little bit for your for your mm -hmm. piece. Sure. Yeah, I like that idea um, that Jay mentioned about problem solving. Um, you know, film is different because you know you have the opportunity to you know um, depict it in in which way you feel is best to um, and what is true to your vision. Um, but I actually started working with um, Destiny, the poet in the film. And we literally, we had known each other through um, another um, program that we were both a part of. And we caught up first and foremost. It was literally like a four hour <laughs> meeting where we just like talked and like just really just was able to sort of reconnect. And I think that in itself was sort of the foundation and the launching pad for us to really get into our ideas of what it is we wanted for the film. But I told her that I was very specific in that I wanted to move to a black voice and thinking about the things that um, I wanted the film to be centered on and sort of thinking about what does it look like for Black people to honor um, the intimacies um, in the way that we live? So a lot of what she was referencing in the film, I was thinking about a lot of what I was experiencing from my childhood um, and thinking about, you know, those moments where, um, like, I remember being a kid and, like, getting it in on the playground and, like, go to my ear. Um, elementary school um shout outs to the folks who who went to golda um in the city uh <laughs> you know i think about um like the first time where i was at my grandparents and seeing a black man being arrested in front of my eyes um i think about you know most recently when and you know jay she probably can vouch for this like being in africa and dancing you know, at the Atlantic, at the beach on the Atlantic Ocean. Um, so, you know, that informed a lot of my uh, my movement in terms of, um, you know, the way I sort of infused like a lot of like jazz inspired and blues movement, but also like a lot of the West African um, and some of the hip hop inspired movement and thinking about how I naturally like to infuse a lot of my influences. So that was really, um, really what I wanted to sort of encapsulate in terms of how I wanted to embody what I wanted to do um, movement wise with the film. And, you know, and like I keep saying, Destiny was just coming along for the ride. And like, it was just amazing the the whole process of it all. Um, and those special moments that um, you don't um, imagine to sort of come the way that they come like i remember there was a moment where uh, my center photographer um we were on set and the camera just went out of balance and so we you know we went to review the footage and i was just like i really like that can we keep that in the film and he was like are you sure and he was like i'm not a dancer but like you want to make sure that like your body is and i was like no because i think it, it 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 adds to the dimension of what it is I'm trying to convey in terms of, you know, what it means to be um, 
black and the black body to experience and what happens to us in this country, you know? That's good. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, being a choreographer versus the dancer is hard. It's a different process. You work in a different process. And I can definitely attest to that for the pieces where, you know, you try to put yourself in. It's just as you're putting together the piece, it's a sauce that's created with the dancers on stage in the rehearsal. Um, and trying to insert into that space is really hard on both sides. Now, Rise, you had the job of trying to connect our current generation of young people who are disconnected from the struggle of AIDS, um, deeply disconnected from the struggle of AIDS. You had to try to, to bridge uh, the struggle. Like, well, it's not AIDS, but what is it? Um, and as a choreographer, period, trying you, your job, your responsibility is to um, create the piece and have make sure uh, get folks to a place. You got to get them to a place before they perform. Um, and it, it's hard because, again, technique, steps, time, cool. Uh, but there's a place in addition to the stage or the location, there's a place that we have to be in our body and our spirit. And so for you, while you were on the stage, your job was to get them to the place. And so how can you talk about, you know, what it was like for you to get them to embody the peace? Um, yeah, it was, um, it was difficult and, and also rewarding. And, and I and it was it was a difficult task that I I was very excited by and inspired by because it really is a um, a spiritual uh, journey and how do you inspire a spiritual journey knowing that you can't force one on anybody and also um, you can't dictate if a spiritual journey is authentic it is within the self and so you can't dictate where the end point is right you can't say like let here's the answer let me just give you the answer <laughs> because you're not getting it or whatever right there there is no answer it is it is it is the search deep within so you just have to find ways to inspire the search and deeper thought and deeper connection. And, and looking for the ways with that particular demographic, that particular group of students, like what is going to be the thing that's going to start to unlock and crack open? Um, that was both challenging, but also very exciting and very rewarding. Um, and in terms of the fact that I also had my own muscle memory of the dance and um, I, it was, that was both, uh, I think it was a tool in a way for the, in order to thinking now as a, as a, on the filmic side, it was a tool to be able to understand how to uh, first of all, the storyline of the of the film, like like that trajectory, or what what Jade was talking about about the rhythm of the editing and what what needs to come next and what we need to know. There's a there's a certain embodiment on that level that as a dancer you just if 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 it is a danced story, then there's a certain amount. I don't know, maybe Jade and Demar um, would either agree or disagree, but there's a certain amount that you feel it. <laughs> right you just I agree. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um and i'm not a film i i do not consider myself a filmmaker because this is the one and only film i've ever made i was compelled mm -hmm. to make this film i i i didn't necessarily see a life in film for myself and so it was really about talking to tom who brought the filmic expertise saying this is what I remember. This is what my body knows. This is what my mom, muscle memory is telling me. This is what this dance feels like. Now, how do you translate that into film language? And how? And then with the editor saying that that shot 
yeah, that's great. But if you if you cut it just a little later, we're going to get that that we need at the end of that movement. And don't cut it before that because it's you have you know the movement's not done yet. So so there was that level of embodiment was what came into the filmmaking. Um, which was also very satisfying. That was new for me because I had never done a made a film before. So, um, yeah. Does that answer your question? I don't. <laughs> yes, of course, of course. Okay. Yes, <laughs> it's not right or wrong. Yeah, no. That I mean, I was I was just sitting in it thinking about. I was just thinking about um, uh, how creating film, creating dance film, and when you said. Uh, if you just a little like two seconds more, like you'll mm -hmm. get it. And so that can be hard. It's really, uh, it's really hard to be versus like just shooting scenes and, you know, editing, but you're trying to get this dance. And so sometimes, uh, yeah, uh, if you're not a dancer, you know, you don't, you'll miss those pieces. Like, oh, I'll just chop it right here. It's like, no, <laughs> it I makes it great. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, I, probably all of us can relate to watching a film that has dance in it or is about dance and knowing that they did not have a dancer in the cutting room, mm -hmm. right? Like mm -hmm. you can tell <laughs> because mm -hmm. it is just that like ha the way movement operates and the way you cut movement and all of that stuff. I mean, we had an amazing editor, Ann Collins, who's is just great. But the fact that she wanted me in the editing room as well you know, with Tom saying, okay, how is the movement? You know, I, I'm curious with the two of you, how you felt about the editing process. Editing, I learned to edit because I realized, you know, like no one is going to spend as much time as I am and going to be as committed as I am to the vision. I mean, you can pay, paying top dollar if you're getting really, really good editors because it takes a lot. Editing is a long time. I don't really edit for other people because it's just, it's very time consuming. But um, I don't think editors get enough credit because I think that's where the real, the, the filmmaking, I mean, they all work together, but the editing and how they see the story is really important and as dancers that's where that there there are compromises though i think there's a beautiful thing with working with people who aren't dancers because they see a different they have a different eye than mm -hmm. you. and so sometimes it's like a beautiful marriage of the two when they have their ideas and you have yours but you know like well this clip is cleaner like the dancers look clean on this like <laughs> the, the leg is is here or whatever you need or not and um so i think it's just important i would just recommend you know if you're not going to edit to be in the editing room because yeah that's good so uh damar did you want to respond yeah i was just going to say shout out to my folk who were extremely patient with me <laughs> during the editing process um because I, I can definitely relate, you know, where I had those moments where I was like, that's that's not cute. We're not putting that in the film. Um, <laughs> but what I, was, what I really loved was being really drawn into a lot of my theater background. Um, I was a theater minor in college and really thinking about that idea of the beat, right? And in theater and allowing the um, film to have that breath and not being so consumed about just doing a whole bunch of movement. Um, and I love those moments in the film where I was just able to have a moment with the camera or more so the camera having a moment with me, um, even with yeah. Destiny, like the moment where she's walking and she's sort of coming towards me, um, towards the end to sort of greet me. Um, those things were really, really cool to add that extra layer, you know, that we talked about um to the movement but yeah you know i'm with jay like shout out to editors um, <laughs> it's a process it is truly truly a process um so you are creating so in creating the piece we talk about trauma and healing you know when people see your films you know what do you want them to walk away with what do you want them to feel experience 
understand whatever what do you want them to walk away with when they when they finish seeing beckoning gold the beckoning gold and can you bring it i would love them to walk away with the feeling of exuberance and vitality and like we're gonna be all right we're gonna make it like that's what the dance does at the, uh, you know, and if anyone has not yet ever seen Demon in the Waters live, it is a dance you need to see live in its entirety because it does that. It does that consistently and reliably to the audience at the end when the, when the person is thrown up in the air and the lights go out, you know, people, you just are compelled to rise to your feet. And if the film can capture that sentiment of, you know, I love you. We're gonna make it. We're gonna make it through. You know, or let me let me call my mom. Haven't talked to her in a while. You know, just just that sentiment. Um, then we've done our job, and 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 I'll be happy. <laughs> you know, I'll say the same thing. Like we're gonna be all right, um, black folk. You are inherently worthy, even when the world tells you that you aren't. Um, and I also will say that for Black people, I want them to understand that it's okay to feel. I think oftentimes the world tells us that, you know, um, that we can't be human, you know, and for a lot of people, you know, there's a lot of, been a lot of argument, or I should say a lot of discourse around, you know, are Black people human? Um, but whatever that means for you, that we definitely have emotion and we have the permission to feel, which leads me to the idea of um, there's an acknowledgement that comes with um, understanding and having to sift through one's pain. And ultimately, you get to determine what you get to do with that as a Black person. Um, and, you know, you can make the lemons into lemonade. You know, you can do all of those those things. Um, and black folks, we we we've been doing it for such a long time. And I think that's the beauty of art as a whole, the way that it sustains us and it allows us to um, imagine, radically imagine. And um, yeah, that's what um, I feel dance does. And um, with this sort of um, Avenue dance film, you know, this was my first film as well. I, I think about how important that is to center, you know, um, our experiences and our stories with it. Yeah, I, I'll be quick. I think what I know I want people, I'm addressing little black and brown girls. I want them to be able to put on their bamboo earrings and see their gold picks and see themselves in the film and see that they can, you know, they can create worlds. I want us to get back to um, kind of what Damar was saying. I think that imagination is liberation and being able to imagine again and, and, and become and create new worlds for ourselves as possible. And so when they see this film, I want them to be able to imagine a world. Yeah. And yeah, thank can you. I, all. Go ahead. Add, I, sorry, can I just add one thing that to this that I didn't say, but I also want the world to know who Bill T. Jones is because what Jade and Damar were just saying about the imagination and telling our stories, Bill T. Jones has been doing that for decades. And, and he is one of, the greatest tellers of black stories of our stories of human stories that we have and so if he could just you know everybody in the world needs to know who he is sorry i just had to throw that in there my no, shout out to bill <laughs> no it's a great example because i think you know a lot of sometimes even us as black people uh, but period can be put in a box, can be, you know, think where it's homogenous, whether we believe it or the world believes it. And so I appreciate each and every one of you all telling your story. I think representation is extremely important. Black Lens and all the other different um, spaces in Milwaukee Film Festival that allows uh, groups 
to tell their stories from their perspective. It's all different, but there are similar threads um, around. And for us, dance, you know, is life. Dance is healing. Dance is an opportunity to be able to tell our stories. And using film, it's just another opportunity. You may not be on the stage to see it, but you have it all across the world and it lives forever. So thank you all for being brave to do your pieces. Thank you, Jay, for doing, to producing this work in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, for everyone else who is viewing, you have an opportunity to go to the film festival, check out these uh, films. Um, uh, you can, that's on the website. Uh, there's plenty of other panels and discussions that'll be taking place. And so uh, take advantage, uh, check out Go by Jay Sharon, check out Beckoning by Damar Walker and check out Can You Bring It uh, by Ross LeBlanc. And thank you all again so much. We out. Bye. Toodles. Bye. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank Bye. you. And thanks, Glashada. Bye. Thank you for the interpreters. Shout out to our interpreters, our Black interpreters. They were holding it down. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye.